Jennings. I know it's in your blood to chase birds, but please don't do it. Poor little things are trying to enjoy the first bit of peace and quiet they've had in a hundred years. Good boy. It's true, people do keep saying how quiet it is. Apart from the birds, of course. Even where it was always pretty quiet, I suppose it will be different when they get the combines out. Juggernauts. But you know the question I've been thinking about sitting here doing absolutely nothing all day is the one they always ask in detective stories. I mean, if someone falls off a roof, say, who benefits from it? I'd welcome your views. Because it's gone pretty quiet about the whole thing at the scene of the crime, if crime there was. The living of Borsica. I used to talk back to them, to begin with. Perhaps you do the same. I was saying, for heaven's sake, Lizzie, don't plant nasturtiums there. The colour would be all wrong. You see, that's the difference between Lower Loxley Hall and a farmhouse. But you can't expect her to just know that, bless her. Even after our all too short years of marriage. But she never heard me. And in the end, you just have to accept they can't hear you. And perhaps even it's none of your business. And nothing you can say or shout even is ever going to influence them. And the nasturtiums or whatever it is go in, yellow and orange when they need to be blue and, um, well, blue. Greyish blue at that. But you see what you can do. You get that funny feeling about, am I real? and they're a dream, or am I a dream and they're real? Or that really scary possibility, are we both dreams? I was Nigel Pargeter. I can say that with pride, I think. Where is Mowbray? Where is Mortimer? Nay, which is more and most of all, where is Plantagenet? Although now we know the answer to that was in the car park. Hmm. <laughs> I used to think Pargeter might be a worn-down version of Plantagenet. Can you hear that? Plantagenet? Pargeter? <laughs> Actually, I think it means plasterer or something similar. I looked it up once and closed the book pretty quickly as there are some things one would rather not know. And anyway, after me, it'll always be a posh name. Not the plaster isn't a perfectly good job. In fact, I sometimes wish I'd known a bit more about that sort of thing. It can come in handy. Does anyone believe that ridiculous story about falling off the roof? The roof, when you come to think about it, everyone knew I'd spent my childhood running about on and hiding behind the chimneys and rolling tennis balls off when I was trying to hit Mummy, Julia, as she lay in a steamer chair with a gin and tonic, chatting to Toby Stobeman and Reggie Trentham. Is it just me who remembers them now? They were a ghastly pair, but still. I'm absolutely going to say I know it wasn't my wife. Poor love, just look at her goings on since it happened. And I do think she was genuinely upset to see me go whizzing off like that. I expect a lot of you thought she'd marry again to some other well-off toff. They do seem to pop up in Borsetshire in a very convenient way whenever there's a luscious widow about, and have done for decades. And she's a very attractive woman, you know. I am fond of Shula. For all her faults, Ooh, Vicar, has she gone raving mad? But Lizzie, well, different thing. But no, she was left to struggle on alone, apart from the devoted retainers, with very little love interest. In fact, I should say no love interest. But my point is, she didn't get rid of me so she could marry someone else, and she was no better off. Perhaps if the spotlight was on her somewhat more, she might have wanted that, but surely not at my expense. The Archers, though, are not without a rather sinister history when it comes to violent events. We have the founder victim, Grace Archer, who died in a mysterious fire in the stables. Grace Archer, wife of Phil Archer, who was, as we all know, David's father. And none of the horses died, which makes me think this might have been what they call now a targeted attack, 
because horses would really be the expected victims of a stable fire anywhere else. Although I do have to say Mr Archer was always perfectly decent to me, so difficult to know. His uncle Tom, you may remember, shot a poacher dead. And a poacher he was in a love triangle with. No, I'm not making this up. You can see it all in the Borsetshire Echo. I think he more or less got off. No surprises there. The ones who walk down the steps of Borsetshire Crown Court to the prison van do tend to be the less well-connected members of that society. Look at Helen Archer taking a skewer, or whatever it was, to her boyfriend and getting away with it. Although in that case he richly deserved it. Not called Archer for nothing, perhaps. But to get back to the roof, I am, as you may imagine, quite slight, unlike David Archer. He's got the most enormous farmer's hands, so he can upend a pregnant cow stuck in the mud, or grab a tractor or two as they float past him on the flooded dam, and certainly give me a push off a roof if he felt like it. Did he hate me that much? I think somebody wanted me out of Borsetshire and they didn't want any mistake about it. David was perhaps just the instrument, the hired gun. Yes, I can really see him as that. Because for all his bucolic bonhomie, he never really liked me. A tiny bit jealous. Town not big enough for the both of us. Hmm? I wonder what other methods had floated through their minds. There are a lot of ways out of Borsetshire. Some have been deposed, some slain in war, some haunted by the ghosts they have deposed. Well, we can but hope. Some run over by the bulk milk tanker, some gone in a plane crash, some dispatched by a runaway stag, some shuffled off to the laurels. All murdered. Why pick on me at all, when they could have had Shula's second husband, who was so boring I've literally forgotten his name, first and second? Or Brian Aldrich? I've never seen what's so interesting about him. Some village Henry VIII, I grant you, but that's a post that can be filled by any male, and he was much older than me. But me? Who benefited from that? I seem to have got rather carried away. I'm sorry. Not the sort of thing you want to hear on an afternoon like this. Isn't all this good weather marvellous? I can't bear that there isn't any cricket going on. It just seems so wrong somehow. But you can hear them. Listen. No, Jennings, come here. Do leave them alone. Good boy. There they are, all the birds of Oxfordshire and Gloucestershire.